Right, well, I mean, we've clearly reached that point in the relationship where I just don't bother making any effort anymore. We've all been there. Just wait till the day that I introduce you to my granny pants. That's when you know that it's true love. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing really well. It's actually been a little while since I sat down and filmed a video doing that thing again where I just overthink everything I make into oblivion until it feels wrong on many levels and then I just don't make anything and then make myself more and more anxious because nothing is being created. It's a, it's a real good time. It's really satisfying and not at all frustrating. But quite frankly, I've had enough of driving myself insane with overthinking every step I take, every move I make, every breath I take. I'll be watching you. So I decided to underthink it as much as possible, take it back so much that you're probably wondering, have I finally lost the plot completely? And here I am looking like the slightly grungy, unwashed friend of your teenage brother in 1997. But there is actually a reason for my giant moon face coming at you with zero makeup on, because I've had a really cool delivery. I had a really cool delivery from Yes Style, who very kindly sent me so much Korean skincare um, that I'm not entirely sure where to start to be honest. I haven't really dived in too far just yet but this box looks like it's going to be filled with some pretty amazing unique creative stuff. I mean everything I can see has got a cute little face on it which is a good sign in my opinion. I'll go through everything that's in here, we'll marvel and be amazed at everything um, and then We'll also do a Q&A because what else does a YouTuber have to fall back on other than just talking about themselves? So you guys sent in a load of questions that I am keen to answer. My skin is very much letting the world know that I'm on my period. So let's do a little bit of multitasking and tackle both of those things at once in a video that I like to call Mask Me Anything. I mean, it's good. And I thought about it the other day and I thought, wow, I am a creative genius. This might be verging on creative genius. But then also had the realization that I think I might have seen someone do that before. And actually I think I've stolen that great idea, which is always a shame. So enough of my rambling. You can tell I haven't been sat in front of a camera for a little while because this just won't stop happening, blah, words. So if you do enjoy this video, please do give it a little thumbs up. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new. And let's get stuck in with Mask Me Anything. It's a good one. Wish I'd thought of it myself. Ikey dikey. So knowing that there was face masks involved, I came prepared with my trusty big old hair clip to get this out of the way. However, the first thing in this box is gonna save me the trouble because we've got ourselves a little bunny hairband, which might be the cutest thing I've ever seen. Here she goes, here she is. I mean, some people would say Jessica Rabbit, if they were blind. <laughs> Fairly sure I've got a discount code for this website. This isn't an ad. Uh, I was ad gifted all of these lovely things, just to let you know. Um, but I'm pretty sure I've also got a discount code, so if I can find it, if I haven't deleted the email, you better believe that I'm putting one of these on for the rest of the video, so look forward to that. Heated eye mask, which sounds absolutely delightful. A coconut milk face mask, which also sounds amazing. This is, oh my god, this is exactly what I need in my life. A little set of sheet masks for each of your fingers. And if you didn't know this about me, I'm an anxious weirdo with many issues. More issues than Vogue, as the Primark t-shirts would say. I like to basically rip the skin off my fingers until they look like 10 little zombies being carried around on the ends of my hands. Green tea face mask. This is little patches for your laughter lines. I mean, all these things that are wrong with my face. Hopefully this box is gonna sort me right out. I mean, this could be the one that I feel is necessary today. This is the Baby Pet Magic Mask Sheet. Um, and it's in a cat design. I first thought that it was a sheet mask actually for a cat. And then this is a lip patch. Although wearing a lip mask while trying to talk to a camera, Maybe not the easiest combo. Oh, a foot mask. I mean, I've got bare feet right now. I could put that on um, and not not show you because there's special channels that pay for that kind of stuff. And if I'm gonna make that content, you better believe I'm getting paid for it. I've also got this, which I'm pretty sure is one of the goalie gloves that my brother used to use when we were at junior school. Oh, it's a pet glove. It's got little spikes all over it and you use it to brush your pet. So Flo will be very into that, hopefully. If not, I'll train her to be the next 
David Seaman. That's when you know that you're really not into modern day sport when your point of reference for football is David Seaman. Bubble tea sleeping pack. Um, oh my god, this is the cutest thing I've ever seen. Look how cute this packaging is. This is a little face mask in like a little coffee cup and also comes with a tiny spoon. I mean, I'm a nearly 28 year old woman and I'm still tempted to, <laughs> to try and see what this tastes like. I promise I won't. Definitely gonna pop that on my face before I go to bed tonight. These bunny ears are actually kind of tighter on my head. Good job they look adorable. Which might be a torture device or it might be my beauty tool, exfoliating jellyfish silicon <laughs> brush. Who doesn't need an exfoliating jellyfish? Oh, it feels so nice. Don't mind me. And then there's like a spongy bit in the middle there. This looks a bit dodgy, which I guess you fill with product and then you exfoliate. Uh, cool. I just love Korean Asian products so much. They're so much more interesting and unique and creative and cute and adorable. I wish all of our stuff was like this. I'm gonna try some of these on my Instagram. So make sure you follow me over there. <gasps> Oh my god, that's so pretty. Very excited about that, and I've got a couple more of those as well. So let's try those out properly over on Instagram. At Lucy Jane Wood, if you're not following me, slip that one in there. Be right back while I put this on. I feel like I'm gonna regret choosing to use this one <laughs> on camera. Because I can see I can see whiskers. I'd also really recommend that you grab a face mask while we sit and watch this video and we can both be super extra together. Oh my God, this is hilarious. Um, wow. <laughs> Just move my bunny ears out of the way. Oh, there is so much product on this and my bunny ears are gonna ping off. <laughs> you know, when you catch sight of yourself and you're like, what am I doing? What, well, how has this happened to me? I really hope none of these questions for the next 20 minutes are too deep and meaningful because I'm not sure how well that message is gonna get conveyed while I'm wearing this. In the distance, I look like a French gentleman. I also can't speak that well. Maybe I should have thought about this video idea a little more thoroughly than I really did. I feel like I could literally be in Cats. What songs are in Cats? Memory, all alone in the moon. Okay, so question one in this Mask Me Anything journey. Do you think you'll ever move into YouTube as a full-time job? Uh, I got asked about my job situation a lot actually. Um, I guess a lot of you have come from like the fashion-y videos where I don't really tell you anything about myself other than how much I loathe various parts of my body. Well in terms of income, YouTube is probably like 90% of my income now. Um, I make most of my money through YouTube these days which is so... I don't know how that happened. I mean look at this. How did that happen? But I haven't actually given up my other proper job yet, um, which is freelance writing. So Mondays and Tuesdays, I work for Marie Claire um, US as their morning editor. Um, and I haven't let that go yet, mainly just because, well, I'm kind of terrified that one day YouTube won't exist anymore and I will be down the job center. I haven't really got the urge to leave my writing behind just yet. Um, unless like a bigger writing project comes along. Ding. The biggest challenge or insecurity you want to overcome this year? Ooh, that's a really good question. Um, I mean, there's a few of them. Please take your pick. I'll just line them all up, shall I? I suddenly started, you know, like featuring my body in videos, which was something that I was terrified of. Literally this time last year, I would never have done that in a million years. And all of a sudden it's now like the majority of my content. So that kind of seems like I've overcome a lot of insecurities. Actually, what I tend to do with them is kind of just like pretend that I'm a different person, if that makes any sense. And it's almost like a fake it till you make it kind of jobby. Like if you just kind of pretend it's not the case, temporarily doesn't exist in your own brain. So I feel like I'm just gonna keep going with that approach. Not sure how actually good that is for me. I would really like to doubt myself less. I doubt myself so much, I doubt every single idea that I come up with, every word that I put to paper. So it would be nice to kind of have a little bit more self-belief going on and God, I always just think like, oh, imagine what I could be doing if I actually like really backed myself and thought that I was really good at things. So I would really like to have some genuine confidence 
at some stage. I mean, I'm getting on a bit now, so if it could start to appear at any point in my life, I would really appreciate that. Favourite way to unwind? Oh, that's a nice question. Basically, what I've always done my entire life is discover that I really enjoy doing something and then turn it into a way of making money. Um, and that's exactly what I've done with basically all of my hobbies and interests, always. So I've been kind of left in this like weird limbo trying to figure out, well, okay, what do I enjoy that's not anything to do with earning my living and that doesn't come with any form of pressure or second guessing? What do I enjoy that's just me sitting there having a nice time? Um, and the answer to that is I literally have no idea. So like, for example, last week I booked myself onto a knitting class because I was like, I really want to learn to knit. Um, so I went off to this knitting class on my own, sat for two and a half hours learning how to knit. It was amazing. So I love doing like crafty little things like that. And obviously also going out with my friends and eating pizza slash drinking beers. Do you ever worry about getting larger and gaining weight and how do you cope with that? Oh boy. Even though I'm making a conscious effort to not feel like that anymore, I can't help it. Like it still is in the back of my mind. And it all comes from the messages that you've grown up with and the diet industry, diet culture, products being sold to you. And I'm really bored of giving any time to that message anymore. So um, that helps me when I try and remember the kind of like industry messages that are the sole reason for why I feel bad about myself when I gain weight. That's always quite helpful to remember. And I say it all the time, but it's just about being a little bit kinder to yourself. It's all about talking to yourself in the exact same way that you would talk to a best mate. If a best mate came to you and said, oh my God, I've gained eight pounds. Like I feel so shit about myself. Why have I done this? Why have I let myself go? Imagine the stuff you would say to them. So why would you not say that to yourself? I've also come to the kind of realization that like the weight that I am at right now is the weight that I am when I am having a nice life, socializing as much as I want to, eating fresh, healthy, filling meals that I enjoy and that my body enjoys as well. There's no punishment going on right now. And if that is, if this is the body that comes hand in hand with that, then maybe this is the body that I'm supposed to have. If I'm living, a really lovely, fun, enjoyable, wonderful life, and there is no punishment involved in that, and self-loathing and self-hatred that comes hand in hand with dieting. Maybe this is just the weight that I'm supposed to be right now. Quite a deep thing to talk about while my head currently looks like this, but that's okay. I just realized that I look a little bit like Slipknot, if Slipknot was to have like a cat. What am I reading right now? I have just finished Bridget Jones's Diary, Weirdly enough, um, I've never actually read Bridget Jones's Diary. I loved it so much. I was laughing out loud. There are a few problems with it, let's put it that way, but it's literally like 20, 25 years old now, that book. Um, and a lot of it has not aged particularly well. A lot of like the weight references and the diet references and stuff, but you have to just kind of take it for what it is. Um, and it is hilarious. And I've just started reading Sally Rooney, I think it is, Sally Rooney. Um, not the new one, the other one, that's something about friends. How do you decide when and why to do a brand deal? Um, I look at my bank balance and see how desperate things are. No, I'm kidding. Obviously I'm kidding. So the first thing, literally the first thing that I think about is if it's anything that would be remotely damaging. So things like weight loss products, anything that mentions calories, um, anything to do with like dieting, anything along those lines, so no from me, skedaddle. Sayonara, see you later. I ain't got time for that, that's not the place for it. But if it passes that first initial round of auditions from the X Factor, um, then I'll take a closer look at it. And basically if it's something that I'm like, oh yeah, I either already love that brand or I've just been introduced to this brand and I think it's super cool. Like I really, really work quite hard and I hope it comes across on making sure that any adverts that I do fit very seamlessly into content that I would already be making. Oh my God, finally, it's been 20 minutes. Let's lose the cat. Cat be gone. Ah, oh, it's a girl. Next question made me laugh. Moon cup update, question mark. Um, I'm really sorry about this blinding light, by the way, the sun is so bright and I would pull the blind down, but our blind is bright red 
and that's not gonna be my best look, I don't think. There is a video on here somewhere where I tried my moon cup for the first time. It was literally years ago now. I've maybe been using it for like two, no, it must be longer, maybe like three years. I have never ever had any like dramatic problems with it. I've got one friend who dropped theirs on the floor and it rolled into the cubicle next door. So amazing. But I guess my update is that I still absolutely love it. I use it every single month. Um, cannot recommend them enough. I do still occasionally alternate between pads and tampons as well, just because I guess some days you don't necessarily feel like operating the moon cup way of life. But yeah, I'd say 80% of my period is now moon cup reliant and I love it so much. Do you think living in London is worth it in terms of both career and everyday life? Wow, way to make me question all of my life choices right there. Um, is living in London worth it? Yes, but financially it is a strain and I, I think people who do live in London forget how insane it is. We're just starting to think about trying to buy a flat together, Adam and I. We're just starting to think about it and starting to have a look at the market and oh my god, it is... I was going to say a joke, but it's the least funny joke that's ever been invented. You don't catch me laughing while I'm looking on right move at two bedroom apartments for half a million pounds. Let me tell you, I ain't laughing. But having said that, there is a reason that I've now lived here on and off for like nine years. It was 2009 that I first moved to London, which was so long ago. Really kind of like in the hub of where everything happens in terms of youtube -y kind of stuff. That's really exciting. I've got amazing friends here and I think we do kind of utilize it pretty well. I think we go out a lot, we go to a lot of cool places. So if you're thinking about it, um, just be prepared to be skint, just perpetually skint forever. Um, but I think it's worth it. Has being a YouTuber positively or negatively affected your mental health? Do you feel more pressure to make videos and more videos now that your channel has grown? <laughs> I honestly think it is six of one and half a dozen of the other when it comes to YouTube and mental health. Um, there are some aspects of it which have helped me leaps and bounds. It has honestly like changed me as a person. I was painfully, painfully shy. I was incredibly socially awkward and I mean I'm still, I'm still very much that person. Going to events where you don't know anybody and things like that, I mean it's still very much my worst nightmare, but I've learned to cope with it better. The past sort of eight to ten months or so have been partly very positive for my body image and kind of like the community that we've built on here in terms of like that mid-size fashion community has definitely been very positive for me. But I'll be totally honest and say that I also think there are a lot of damaging parts to it, which worry me a lot because I'm like a, I mean, I hate to say it, but I am like an adult. And I see kids on here who are doing it when they're like 16, 17. And I mean, a lot of them are unbearable. Like I watch them and I'm like, oh my God, like you are unbearable. There is so much pressure that comes with it that I literally wake up in the middle of the night at like three o'clock in the morning sometimes, just like, what am I gonna film? What am I gonna film? That's a terrible idea, can't do that. People say that about that, so I can't do that. People say this about that, so I better not do that. So much second guessing with it that it has made my anxiety 10 bajillion times more intense than it's ever been before. And something else that I do find a little bit um, tricky to get my head around a bit. I don't know, I get a lot of people every day now that kind of share their story with me, which I love and struggle with at the same time. It's quite a lot, it's quite intense and also I just want to say this as a little side note as well. I get a lot of people messaging me saying things like I've got exactly the same body as you and I absolutely hate it, I find it so disgusting, I can't find a single positive thing about it. How do you do it? And I'm like you do realise that you've You've literally just messaged me and said, your body's disgusting, what do you like about it? I'm really having to very much train my brain into not having meltdowns over all the time. It's just a lot of things that are potential brewing bubbling meltdowns, like a little Mentos in a Diet Coke, but with the lid on. And do I feel more pressure to make 
videos or more videos now that my channel's grown. Uh, yes and yes. It's weird though because it's not really a pressure to make more videos, it's a pressure to make videos that are perfect. I'm just a total, total perfectionist and it, even though I'm like the messiest, most chaotic, it's just a total perfectionist pressure that I put on myself. Even though you guys would be like, why are you stressing about this? It doesn't matter, just upload whatever you want. Every video I do has to be different and have a little message to it. And that's, that's what makes me overthink everything. And everything has to be perfect and it has to, has to carry value with it and it has to be worth making. And I really just need to chill out with that. I really, really do. Anyway, this has turned into a therapy session, good. Why isn't Adam in more of your videos? Um, I don't know really. I think it's just because I film while he's at work and then when he comes home from work, I wanna be off the internet and enjoying spending time with him. But there are a couple of videos I would really like to film with him. And also we've got some traveling coming up. I can't tell you what they are yet, uh, but we've got some travels coming up and obviously he'll be in those. Um, yeah. Oh, I'm really excited to tell you about that. Okay, this is the last question. I just have to mention this because every time this gets commented or sent to me or whatever, I literally like laugh out loud because the idea to me is so, so far removed from anything I would ever do. Um, and that question is, why don't you do stand-up comedy? Let me count the ways. I said this earlier, I think. I mean, it feels like I've literally been filming for about four and a half hours here. People mistake making YouTube videos, making YouTube content as confidence, when actually you are just a weirdo sat on your own. I'm literally sat here in my front room and if I didn't have the camera turned on, I would be an insane person right now. Just the fact that I've got a camera and a microphone switched on and this is being uploaded to the internet that stops me being committed to an insane asylum. Maybe this is just me. Maybe maybe I'm just totally lying to myself and everyone else is super confident, but I think the nature of YouTube actually attracts very shy people, but it's shy people who've got something to say and would otherwise struggle to say it if it wasn't just on their own to a camera. I think I'd better wrap this up. I've been filming for so long, this is gonna be the most enormous edit job of all time. And quite frankly, there's leftover pasta bake in the fridge, which is calling my name. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, are you sure? I can take my hair clip out now, can't I? Cause I haven't got a cat face on. Um, but I feel like if you've been watching me for a while, then you'll know that every so often I get like the fear and I put off filming for so long and I get so terrified of the camera that sometimes I just have to film some complete and utter nonsense just to get into the swing of things again. So that's what today has been. But you know what, my favorite part of filming videos is chatting to you guys in the comments. Um, so let's have a chat down below. Sorry for being all over the place. Sorry about the blinding light. Sorry about looking like a wet cat for most of this. This was weird. If you did enjoy this video, please do give it a little thumbs up and don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you're new. You can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram, both at Lucy Jane Wood, and I will see you guys very soon with another more put together, less all over the place video. Although that's probably a lie because they're always a mess. Goodbye. <laughs> Bye.